So, dear brothers uh, and sisters uh, in Christ, so last uh, few weeks uh, we studied about the uh, church. So, we have clearly understood uh, who is the church. Uh, it is uh, not the called ones. It is neither the chosen ones, it is the faithful ones. And uh, in the last two weeks also we saw what is their number. It is one lakh and 44,000. So those are the people whom God is seeking uh, in this earth. Uh, they are called as the little flock. So we also saw that uh, what about the people who are consecrated but who fall down and fall short to receive the reward. What about them? So how God is going to reward them? They have not done such a sin where they can be totally destroyed. Neither can be they given a reward of the divine nature. So what about them? So we saw that it is a great multitude who stand uh, before the throne, who serve the Lord, uh, you see, and the church uh, during the thousand years. Uh. So today, we are going to see from the scriptures what actually differentiates uh, between these two class of people, you see, and what really separates them uh, from the lakh and 44,000. So what are the differences between the little flock and the great mother? This is a very, very important thing. And uh, each and every person who really wants to dedicate his life to the Lord and live a life which is pleasing to the Lord, it is very much that they understand this concept. So the, <clears throat> there are a lot of uh, types and antitypes uh, in the Bible, you see, uh, which is a beautiful example for us uh, between the uh, differentiation between uh, you see, the little flock and the great multitude. And one of them is Esau and Jacob. We all know very well that uh, both were the sons of a uh, same father, Isaac and uh, the same mother, Rebecca. So both were twins, uh, actually, you see. And uh, Esau was the one who was the first one. And uh, in the Bible, the firstborn sons uh, usually have uh, the birthright. So birthright means in the entire property, they were supposed to get uh, the double portion of it. So once uh, we see that uh, Esau was hunter, he went uh, to the forest to hunt uh, something and came and was very angry and was very angry. Jacob had, uh, you see, uh, uh, prepared a wonderful, delicious uh, you see, uh, meal. So suddenly, uh, uh, but uh, suddenly, uh, what happened was that uh, uh, Jacob, uh, you see, uh, was asked by Esau, please give the food. But Jacob, uh, instead of giving it freely, he said, no, I won't give you uh, until you promise uh, me and uh, sell the birthright. So immediately, yes, how in carelessness, uh, he sells his birthright, uh, you see, with a promise. Uh. So, why did he sell it, if you see, he sold it just for a bowl of rice. A small meal, just for a one-time meal. He wanted to, uh, you see, uh, sacrifice his birthright. Uh. So, after uh, uh, selling the birthright, uh, we all know that... Uh, you see, he went to his father to receive the blessings. But by the time Jacob was blessed with the main and the precious things, uh, you see, but uh, nothing was left over for Esau. Then Esau cries very much with a lot of tears, but uh, he did not receive the promise. So similarly, uh, these uh, are the differences between the great multitude and the little flock. You see, the great multitude, just for a little bit of uh, worldly things, uh, you see, worldly benefits, uh, worldly blessings, uh, and worldly things, uh, what they do is that uh, they sell off their birthright. What is the birthright? Uh, God has promised uh, uh, the children of God, the birthright, the double portion of, uh, you see, uh, father's uh, property. So that is the divine nature. You see, double portion means the very, very healthy portion, very large portion very wealthy portion also. So if you see, in God's creation, the double of it, uh, 
is uh, none other than the divine nature because the whole world will be given eternal life. But this is the immortal life, the double to it. You see, that was promised to the eldest uh, son. But uh, you see, so many people they lose it. Why? Because of unfaithfulness, because of, uh, you see, worldly desires. Uh, they sell it off. Uh, you see, the love of money, which the Bible says is the root of all evil. The love of worldly friends. Uh, you see, the Bible says the friendship with the world is enemy with, TV, with God. Uh, and the uh, Bible says, if he that loves the world and the uh, things in it, uh, the love of Father is not in him. So these are the things uh, which uh, carve uh, the great multitude. You see, they pull, they draw the great multitude uh, towards the world. Uh, and great multitude is compromise. You see, they compromise and let go it. Uh, you see, they even ready to sell it. Uh, God permits this one as a test. Uh, but dear brethren, even after a lot of tears, uh, Yes, I was not able to obtain it back. Similarly, the great multitude are never given to see back this opportunity. So let us read Hebrews 12, chapter 16 and 17. Hebrews 12, chapter 16 and 17. Anil Buddha, can you read? Okay. Let there be any fornicator or profane person as is so who for one morsel of meat sold this birthright. For we know how that afterward, when he would have inherited the blessings, he was rejected, for he found no place of repentance, though he, he sought it carefully with tears. Mm, you see? Huh? Let there be... No fornicator or a person like his who sold the birthright just for a huh, morsel of meat afterwards, huh, when he was supposed to inherit the blessing. He sought it, he could not find it. He was rejected. Why? Because he sought it even if tears also did not get it. Dear brethren, similarly, the great multitude will cry because of losing the crown, but their tears will be in vain. They won't get the reward, dear brethren. They will lose the reward. You see, therefore, eh, we should never lust and desire for worldly things. Just for a few things, you see, never compromise with worldly blessings. Why? God is our reward. He will definitely help us. See, Jacob, compared to Jacob and Esau, Jacob was ready to sacrifice everything. He left his father's house. He was a pauper. He did not have anything in his hand. But he went and toiled very hard. He worked very hard. But what did God do? Did God leave him? No. God blessed him abundantly. Similarly, dear Buddhaen, you see, huh? we should sacrifice for the Lord. So read Hebrews 12.15, brother. Hebrews 12.15. Sunita, sister, can you read? Looking di diligently, lest any man fail of the grace of God, Lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble you, and thereby many be defeated. See? Root of bitterness. Satan does the same thing. Small root of bitterness, small misunderstanding, you see, is so among the brethren. So, what will happen? It will start growing. See, our mind will be bothered about those things only. So, this bitterness will spring slowly. You see, as a plant grows slowly, you know, it will grow within self uh, and uh, ultimately it will defile everybody. So we should be very careful with such things, uh, such activities. This is the character of the great multitude. Now, the second comparison is uh, about a king and a queen. You see, we know the Bible says about a king and the queen, that the queen's daughter is going to get married to a princess. Uh, a prince and a princess. Uh, who are these? Uh? So let us read Psalms 45 9. Psalms 45 9. Joel, brother, can you read Psalms 45 9? King's daughters were among, among thy honorable women upon thy right hand did stand the queen in goal of affair. See, the king's daughter, you see. She is uh, completely decorated with gold of her wear. Eh? You see? And uh, she is preparing for the marriage. So, king is there. 
and queen is there. Now, who is this king? Who is this queen? You see, the king is none other than the Lord Jesus Christ. And the queen is the true church. Okay. Uh, the both are going to get married. The Bible says, no. Apostle Paul tells, I have exposed you to one virgin. You see, I have exposed you as a virgin to one husband, even Christ. So, you see, the what is there? Eh? The marriage with the, the king of the queen is going to shortly happen. But how should uh, the queen be? Eh? Read Psalms 45 9. Muna sister, can you read Psalms 45 9? Can read again. Oh. King's daughters were among thy honorable women. Upon thy right hand did stand the queen in gold of Ophir. See, upon his right hand did uh, stand the queen. So, right hand means what? Uh, chief favor. We tell now he is our right hand. Right hand means what? Uh, a very, very important uh, position. So, queen is at the right hand with a very, very chief favor, blessed favor. Now read verse 10 and 11. Hmm. Hear, come, O daughter, and consider and incline thine ear, for it also thine own people and thy father's house. So shall the king greatly desire thy beauty, for he is thy lord, and worship thou him. Hmm. What is the advice for the queen? You see? It is, oh daughter, consider, incline ten year. You see, that means what? Give importance, give attention, be alert. Forget thine own people and forget thy father's house. Huh? If you do this one, then only the king will greatly desire thee. Now, who is this uh, huh? own people and our father's house? You see, the own people are the world. You see, we were living in the world. You see. Now God is calling us out of the world. Now what we should do? We should leave these people, our own people, the worldly people, we should disfellowship them. We should leave them. Then what about this father's house? Who is his father? Our father was uh, Adam. Uh, his house means earth. Forget about the earth. If you want to attain the heavenly salvation, if you want the king to love you, if you want the king Jesus to admire you and love you, the first thing you should do is that uh, you should forget this earth. Uh, forget earthly salvation. Only desire should be about the heavenly salvation. Okay. Now verse 13. Uh, verse 13. Uh, Romy brother, Romy sister, can you read? Verse 13. The king's daughter is all glorious within. Her clothing is of... Uh, what was the word? Wrought gold, it? pure gold. Broad gold. Okay, thank you, sir. So the king's daughter is all glorious. How? Within, she is beautiful inside, not beautiful outside. You see, some people are not at all good looking, but they have beauty of character. That is the beauty which God is looking at. So we are all not so beautiful outwardly, but God is seeing our inward beauty. The church is. Inward beauty is the one that is important. Uh, and uh, how is her clothing? It is of uh, pure gold. Now what is this pure gold? How is this clothing of pure gold? What is the meaning of this one? You see, huh? usually during those days, uh, huh? they used to have that marriage robe. How do you used to, how they used to have the marriage robe? You see, the uh, bridegroom side usually used to gift the bride a plain white cloth with a lot of golden threads to do the embroidery work. And she was given one year time. So one year time, the work of that bride was to prepare herself for the marriage. How? Decorate the white robe with beautiful decorations, a beautiful embroidery. Huh? As uh, uh, there is a lot of embroidery and a beautiful and decorated uh, design and all, that showed that uh, she loved the bridegroom very much. If there was only less decoration, not much grand and all, that shows that she did not love the bridegroom very much. This was the way they used to identify the love of the bride for the bridegroom. 
So similarly, what does the Bible say? Psalms 45, 14. Amar Burdar, can you read Psalms 45, 14? Forty five, fourteen. Mm. Psalms forty five, fourteen. Mm. She shall be brought into the king in raiment of needle works, the uh, virgin her complaining that falling her shall be uh, brought into thee. Very good. Uh, she, huh? how is she? She is brought unto the king in raiment, in cloth of beautiful needlework. How is the needlework uh, done? It is not so easy. You see, you need to poke the needle up and down, up and down. You see, pierce the cloth again, again pierce it, bring it down, keep on piercing it. Similarly, God has given us this white robe of righteousness. You see, the great multitude wearing the white robe. That is the righteousness of, uh, you see, Jesus Christ. But this should not be plain. Not only maintaining clean is important, but beautifully embroidering it with the character of Christ. The golden character, the divine character is very, very important. If there is more gold, more beautiful, you see, decorated embroidery, that means that we love the Lord very much. If we are beautiful fruits of the Holy Spirit, that is a sign that we love our Lord. And this was also says, the virgins, her companion, were brought along with the... Now who is these virgins? The queen is the like and 44,000. Now who are the virgins uh, who go along with the queen? This is none other than the great multitude. But uh, whom is going to... The king is going to get married. Uh, he's going to marry to the virgins? Huh? Companions? No. He is going to marry only the queen. But these are his companions, concubines. Uh, similarly, Jesus is going to... Uh, Collect the church, you see, gather the church and take the church and with the church is going to rule. But what about this companions? They shall be like a servants to everyone. So this is the difference between the great multitude and little flock. So one more difference is given to us in Matthew 25th chapter. The parable of the wise and the foolish virgins. Hmm? Let us read that one. Matthew 25, 1 to 4. Matthew 25 verses 1 to 4. Uh, Gopal brother, can you read? Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins, which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. And five of them were wise, and five were foolish. They that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them, but the one but the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. Thank you, brother. See, here the kingdom of heaven, the heavenly salvation is likened to ten virgins. You see? And uh, everybody went to meet the bridegroom with him, sir. They were virgins. But five of them were wise and five of them were foolish. So what is the difference between the wise and the foolish? Everybody are having the lamp. Everybody, there is oil in the lamp. But the wise virgins, they have oil also in the vessel. That was the difference. Uh, huh? But these uh, huh? foolish virgins had oil only in the lamp. But uh, these had extra oil in the vessel also. Now what happened next? Verse 5 and verse 6. Uh, Anil Budar, can you read verse 5 and verse 6? While the bridegroom carried, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight there was there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh, go ye out to meet him. Very good, brother. See what happened? It says, while the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered. That means the bridegroom was supposed to come. Second coming of Jesus. We know that Jesus is going to return second coming. You see? But during that time, what happened in Simsa? Everybody slept off in Simsa. You see, but in the midnight, there was a cry. Aha, why midnight? Huh? When does the day begin? Midnight, 12 o'clock, New Year, you do the party now, people. Huh? When? 12 o'clock, one second, immediately New Year. You see, the beginning of the day, midnight. 
you see jesus came and everybody went out to meet him it seems sir but unfortunately what happened everybody began to trim the lamp but the wise virgin said the oil in the lamp so they poured it into the lamp they went to meet the bridegroom what about the foolish virgin sir they did not have the oil you see the oil in the lamp was totally gone now they had no extra oil in their vessel so they could not go and meet the lord read verse 7 uh verse 7 sunita sister can you read mm -hmm. then all those parisians are arose and trimmed their lamps hmm they all arose and trimmed the lamps verse 8 sister uh and the foolish said unto the wise give us of your oil for our lamps are gone out hmm the foolish said to the wise uh, give us of your oil please share us little bit uh. nothing wrong no see for our lamps are gone out uh. what was the reply verse 9 sister hmm but the wise answered saying not so lest there be not enough for us and you but go ye rather to them that sell and buy for yourselves hmm you see what do you say huh no if you share it it won't be enough for us you go to the seller who sells in the market buy it for yourself you see by the time they went and came what happened you see the door was shut read sister verse 10 hmm. and while they went to buy the bridegroom came and they that were ready went in with him to the marriage and the door was shut Hey, the door was shut. How was this ten virgins? Huh? Read Second Corinthians eleven two. Second Corinthians eleven two. Ah, uh, Romeo's sister, can you read Second Corinthians eleven two? Eleven two. For I am jealous over you with godly jealousy, for I have um, espoused you to one husband, and that I may present you as a cast version of Christ. Hmm. See, church is engaged to Christ. Who is this virgin? It is the true church. Now the true church eagerly went to meet the Lord. Ah, you see, but they had a lamp in their hand. Now, what is the meaning of lamp? Tell me, what is the meaning of lamp in the Bible? See, the Bible is the Bible dictionary. Bible is its own dictionary. So each and every code has to be decoded from the Bible. Now, you tell me, what is the meaning of lamp in the Bible? Hmm? Anybody? Word of God. Very good, sir. Word of God. Psalm seven and nineteen and and five. Psalm seven and nineteen and and five. Uh, Muna sister, please read. Psalm seven and nineteen and and five. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and light unto my path. See, thy word is a lamp unto my feet. Uh huh. So lamp means word of God. See, word of God is there with everybody. See, all our virgins, good character, they have God's word with them. Okay, but ah, uh, ah, uh, oil was not there. It seems oil means what in the Bible? In olden days, you see, they used to use the oil to anoint. Uh, the kings around the judges around the priest so this signifies the anointing of the holy spirit so oil in the bible signifies holy spirit read psalm 133 verses 1 2 and 3 joel brother can you read psalm 133 verse 1 2 and 3 Praise ye the Lord. Praise, O ye servants of the Lord, 
praise the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord from this time for for evermore, from the rising of the sun of sun into the going down. No, 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 no. Psalms one thirty three, one, two, and three. Oh, oh sorry. Hmm. Okay. Behold, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell to together in unity. It is like the precious ointment point men upon the head that ran down upon the beard, even arrow beard that went down to the scratch of his garment oh. as the dew of hormone and as the dew that descended upon the mountains of Zion, mm. for three, the Lord commanded the blessing, evil life for every more. Mm. See, it is like the anointing which God poured upon our own ran from it to the toe. So oil in the Bible signifies the Holy Spirit. Okay. So oil was there in the lamp. That means the Bible is full of Holy Spirit. Bible is filled with God's spirit. There is no doubt at all. But this oil was supposed to be where? It was supposed to be in the vessel also. Now what is the meaning of vessel? You see, vessel in the Bible always signify human beings. Apostle Paul told, no? huh? the, uh, you should be, if you are a chosen vessel, Apostle Paul was a chosen vessel of the Lord. Correct, no? So vessel means... God's chosen people. Read Timothy. Uh, Amar Burdha, read Timothy. One minute. Uh, second Timothy. Second chapter, verse 21, brother. Second Timothy, second chapter, 21. Okay. Second Timothy, second chapter, 21. If a man, therefore, uh, therefore, pours himself from this, he shall be a vessel into, unto honor, and sanctified and meet for the master's use and prepare unto every good work. See? He shall be a vessel. So vessel means should be. So uh, this uh, Holy Spirit should be uh, within us also. You see, but what happened? Uh, the fruits of the Holy Spirit was not within this, uh, you see, virgins. They were good though. They were not wrong. They were not bad people. You see, similarly, the great multitude are all good people. They are not bad. They don't commit sin. But the spirit of consecration is not within them. The fruits of the Holy Spirit is not within them. So therefore, when uh, it was the time that they were supposed to be taken with the Lord, they were not worthy. You see, they could not be taken with the, They did not have their holy mind. Uh, you see, they did not have the fruits of the Holy Spirit. Love, joy, peace, long sufferings. Faith, meekness, temperance. Uh, you see, against which there is no law. This character was not in them. So what did uh, uh, they were advised? Uh, they were advised to go into the market uh, to buy it from one who sells it. Uh. Now who is uh, the owner of the Holy Spirit? Uh? Who has got the Holy Spirit? Uh? Who is the source of Holy Spirit? If you see, he is our God, Almighty God. Uh. So uh, the church has to buy from God. Buy means what? Uh? <laughs> will God give us the Holy Spirit freely? It would cost us something. What is it cost? Cost of sacrifice. What did Jesus say? If any man come after him, me, let him sit down and calculate the cost. You see, you need to sit down and calculate the cost. Whether I will be able to complete my consecration or not, offer yourself as a living sacrifice. This is the cost we pay to the Lord. So he may give us the Holy Spirit. God doesn't freely give us the Holy Spirit. It's upon a condition that if we offer our bodies as a living sacrifice. So, what happened? 
this great multitude went to the world. You see? So, to take this uh, from God had come, but uh, the time was over. So, God had given them a limited opportunity. They lost that opportunity. So, by the time they came, it was over. So, this is the difference. And one more and a very important difference is given as in the story of Gideon. You see, Gideon and his band, uh, there was a war uh, upon the Midianites. The Midianites came and attacked uh, people of Israel. That time, you see, God told uh, you see, Gideon, go and tell the people of Israel who are all willing to, you see, uh, fight, uh, let them all come. So, immediately what happened, you see, when Gideon, uh, so many people, the Jewish people came to fight against the Midianites. Now, how many people came? What happened? Let us read Judges 7 chapter verse 1. Judges 7 chapter verse 1. Uh, Joel brother, can you read Judges 7 1? Then Jerubal, who is Gidon, and all the people that were with him, rose up early and pitched beside the well of Herod, so that the host of the Midianites were on the north side of them by the hill of More in the valley. Mm, you see, the host of Midianites uh, came to attack. Now many people came. Verse 8, uh, chapter 8, verse 10 also read, brother. Now, Jebe and Jalamunna were in Karkor and their horse with them about 15,000 men, all that were left of all the horse of the children of the age, for there fell an hundred and twenty thousand men that drew sword. Hmm? 120,000 people came to attack Israel, it seems. Imagine. Then uh, Gideon tells, huh? you see, uh, as soon as uh, he gives the call, you know how many people came? 30,000 people came. Then God tells, no, no, Gideon, this is too much. Please tell them, who are all afraid, tell them to go back. Now, what happened? Judges 7 chapter verse 2. Muna sister, please read. Judges 7 chapter verse 2. And the Lord said unto Gideon, The people that are with thee are too many for me to give the Midianites into their hands, lest Israel found themselves against me, saying, Mine own hand hath saved me. Hmm. He says, This is too much. As the people of Israel tell that it is my own hand that has saved me. So, it told the people of Israel, whoever is afraid to go to war. Please go back. So as soon as Gideon announced this one, immediately, you see, huh, 22,000 people went away. So only 10,000 were left off. Read verse 3. Muna says to read verse 3 also. Now Gideon said Therefore, go to proclaim in the ears of the people, saying, Whosoever is fearful and afraid, let him return and depart early from, from Mount Gilad. And there returned of the people twenty and two thousand, and there remained ten thousand. Ah, there remained only people, ten thousand. So, initially when God gave a call, thirty-two thousand people came, it seems. So, only ten thousand remained. So, those people were afraid, we went back. So God tells this 10,000 also is too much. Bring him to the water so that I may test him. Read verse uh, 4. Read verse 4. Sunita sister, can you read verse 4? And the Lord said unto Gideon, The people are yet too many. Bring them down unto the water, and I will try them for thee. There and it shall be that of whom I say unto thee, This shall go with thee, the, the same shall go with thee, and of whomsoever I say unto thee, This shall not go with thee, the same shall not go. Mm. So God does bring them to the water. They are too much. I will test them at the water. Now how did God test them? Read verse 5 and 6 also, sister. Six. 
so he brought down the people unto the water, and the Lord said unto Gideon, Everyone that lapeth of the water with his tongue as a dog lapeth, him salt thou saith by himself. Likewise, everyone that boweth down unto down upon his knees to drink. And the number of them that left putting their hand to their mouth were three hundred men, but all the rest of the people bowed down upon their knees to drink water. Mm. You see? So God uh, tested them. How did God test them? How? And what type? How? They will uh, drink uh, the style of drinking the water. Uh, you see? Some people knelt down and drank the water it seems. So those who knelt down and drank the water uh, were 9,700. Uh, so God told, no, reject them. So only 300 people you see, who cleanly took the water in their hand and drank it, where 300 people, only these were selected. Okay, the rest of the people were told, you go back uh, to the tent. So, with these 300 people, God, uh, you see, went uh, for the war against the Midianites. Now, how did God uh, told the Midianites to, how Israel to war against the Midianites? They were supposed to take only three things. No sword, nothing. They were supposed to take a lamp, which was uh, hidden inside, a, you see, a mud pot. And they were supposed to blow a trumpet and run for the war. Read verse 20. Anil Budar, can you read verse 20? And the three company, companies blew the trumpets and the break the pitchers and held the lamps in their left hands and the trumpets in their right hands to blow with all and they cried the sword of the Lord and the and of Gideon. You see, they had only three things. You see, the pitcher was a mud pot inside which there was a lamp. You see, and a uh, yeah, trumpet to blow it. You see, now what is the meaning of all these things? Huh? They broke the vessels, they made the lamp to shine brightly and they blowed the loudly the trumpet. Huh? By the time they went down, the war was over. This is how Israel won the war. So what is the meaning of all these things? Huh? There was a war between Israel and its enemies, Midianites. So similarly, we are also fighting a warfare. You see, who is our enemy? Tell me. We are fighting in this tomb. Any idea? We are a spiritual Israel, no? So we also have warfare. With whom do we fight? Anybody? Spirit. Spirit. Very good. Uh, evil spirits. Uh, correct, brother. Evil spirits and Satan and the powers of this uh, invisible uh, uh, rulership. Read Ephesians 6.12. Uh, Romans sister, read Ephesians 6.12. FC 6.12 For we wrestle not against the flesh and blood, but against the principalities, against the power, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual weakness in high Ah, our way of warfare is not with flesh and blood, but with spiritual powers. Ah, how many people are there? Post comparison, 300 to 120,000. See the comparison, 300 people against 120,000. Massive force. Similarly, we are very small. Only one new creature. But uh, how many fallen angels are there? Legion, isn't it? We don't know how many are there. Our warfare is against them. What did Jesus say? Huh? Gideon told, whoever wants to come for the war, let them come. What did Jesus say? If any man wants to be my disciple, let him deny himself, carry the cross and follow me. Matthew 16, 24. Correct now? Now as soon as this one call was given, how many people came? 
32,000 people came. But we were all selected. No, only a few were selected. What did Jesus say? Matthew 22, 14. Many are called, few are chosen. 22,000 people came similarly to believe in Jesus. The whole majority Christians will come. But are they all chosen class of people? Are they all selected of the Lord? Do the Lord believe them? They might believe the Lord. Okay. But Lord should believe them also. No? You see, that is a very, very important thing. No? Now, Lord says, this is too much. Whoever is fearful about this warfare, whoever doesn't want to fight, who has that fear, let him go. Immediately what happened? Yeah, you see, 22,000 people went off. Only 10,000 were left out. You see, similarly, the believers who just want to believe in Jesus, who doesn't want to do anything for the Lord, as soon as we mention about consecration, dedicating their life to the Lord, they will turn back. They don't want to fight. They don't want to fight this warfare. No, brother, no, sister, I can't do it. It's impossible. Yes, it is impossible. But with God, everything is possible. Do you have faith? You see, those who have faith will stay, isn't it? But those who tremble, isn't it? Those who have fear, you see, those who love the world, they draw back. This is the great multitude. They, they draw back, isn't it? So, you see, the many people, what of 20, majority people went off. So, similarly, the Christians in this world are like this only. They don't want to do anything for the Lord. They want only benefits. They want only comfort, luxury, comfortable life, a pleasant, joyful life, rejoicing life, happy life, full of worldly blessings. That's all. But what are you doing for the Lord? I'll give 10%. That's sufficient for me. No. That is not the thing. What God wants is ourself. So God tells, bring them to the water. I'll test them in the water. What is the meaning of water in the Bible? Bible Water means the truth. Read Habakkuk 2.14. Amar brother, can you read Habakkuk 2.14? Habakkuk 2.14. You can read from the screen also. Okay, Habakkuk 2.14 For the earth shall be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. See, the knowledge of the Lord shall fill the whole earth and waters cover the sea. So water means word of God, God's knowledge, the truth. So they are brought to the truth to test them how they will receive the truth. Some people, just they want to drink the truth. Just they want to listen to the class. Simply they will listen. They will be hearing from this side, living from this side. Nothing will enter their body. These are the 9,700 who just listen. You see, many people followed Jesus. How many people? 4,000, 5,000 people have followed Jesus. Why? Jesus was giving them beautiful stories, nice stories, good food, nice sightseeing, nice walking with Jesus, no trouble. No danger, nothing. So Jesus used to protect them. Everything was there. But uh, huh? what was not there? Uh? Uh -huh. So these are the people who just listen, who don't walk as per the talk. Isn't it? So great multitude. Who uh, don't walk the talk. Keep on listening. You tell them whatever you want. They will keep on listening. You say, that is not the character of God's children. You should filter it. Search from the scriptures whether it is truth or not. Just because we love our pastor, will we listen to everything? No, whatever it is, it should be in the Bible. If it is not there in the Bible, it is not supposed to believe it. Is it it? The people of Israel also were there. They had so much of zeal on the Lord. But their zeal was not without knowledge. They did not do it as per the biblical scriptures. Read Romans 10, chapter 2 and 3. Romans 10, chapter 2 and uh, 3. Uh, Joel Buddha, can you read? For I bear them record that they have a zeal of God, but not according 
to knowledge for they being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. They have zeal, but not according to knowledge. So what is the use if you have zeal, not at knowledge? You do things which are pleasing to God, but if God is not pleased, so what is the use of doing it? It might be our imagination that was not pleasing to the Lord. Uh -huh. So, learning the truth and serving the Lord as per the truth is very important. What did you say? You see, he that worships the Lord should worship him within truth and in spirit. Truth with the dream, truth, that spirit, you should worship the Lord. If you don't know the truth, what's the use? See, 2 Timothy 3 7. 2 Timothy 3 7. Uh, Anil Buddha, can you read 2 Timothy 3 7? Ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. See, ever learning, always keeping on learning, but never coming to the knowledge of truth. These are people keeping on drinking the water, but uh, not correctly assimilating the truth. Uh, so that is important. Uh, so study the word of God is very important. You see, we listen to the classes. Uh, that is not only important. Uh, that is the first thing. Uh, but after listening to the classes, our personal study should be there. You see, just not listen from this year and leave it from that year. Our studies are very important because this helps us to make our warfare easy. Now, did they fight? Only three things. They had a lamb which was hidden in the, you see, mud pot. You see, the earthen vessel. And they blew the trumpet. So, what is the meaning of this one? Earthen vessel means we. The lamp means God's Holy Spirit. Jesus said, no, you are the light of this world. You should shine brightly in this world. But uh, our light is hidden. You see, our character of Christ is hidden in this certain vessel, this uh, uh, old creature. If this light has to shine, what we should do? We should break this vessel. We should break our character, old character. You see, everything should be broken into pieces. All our old character, uh, selfishness, fraud, lies, uh, you see, anger, wrath, uh, you see, pride, ego, you see, our own self things, uh, all these things has to be broken, made into pieces. Then only the light will shine brightly. You see, then we should not only shine brightly, but blow the trumpet. Trumpet means what? Truth. You see, the truth should be shared with everybody. Imagine huh? how many people are we sharing the truth. Huh? Isn't it? So, seeing this only, the Satan will, you see, he will run away from us. No need to go to fight at all. Just do these three things automatically. The devil will, you see, be defeated. Huh? You see, huh? are we doing these things? Huh? Are we breaking our earthen vessel? Are we letting our shine, light shine brightly so it may bring glory to God? You see, are we proclaiming the truth? Imagine these classes, what you have heard till now, have you ever heard it anywhere else? Have you ever heard it? Are you happy listening to these classes? Tell me. Have you ever heard it? Are you all very happy to listen to these classes? Yes, brother. Mm. Yes. yes brother. Only one reply. Yes. Everybody else. Yes, brother. Yes, brother. Yes. Ah, yes brother. See, these classes, you can't hear it anywhere else in the world. It's only with God's children. So, this is a joy to us. Imagine, there's so many people suffering in this world who have the hearing ears. You see, but they don't have this truth. Are we sharing to them? Yes, we need to share. See, so somebody shared the truth to you. That is the reason you, you are so joyful to listen to this truth. Why? Because somebody shared it. If uh, that brother or sister would have told, it's not my responsibility. Let me be faithful to the Lord. Let me alone be faithful to the Lord. 
then uh, would you think the truth would have come to you? No. Similarly, somebody has shared it to me many, many years before. See, that burden, do we have it within us? That trumpet, are we blowing it? Yes, we should blow. Each and every question we find, we should start witnessing. Do you know what is happening in this world? You want to know what's the glass, God's plan in this one? Why so much of evil when God is there? Why is not controlling all these things? Bring, uh, put forth these questions and bring uh, curiosity, generate curiosity in them and bring them the truth. You see, that's what Apostle Paul did, dear brother. Therefore, he said, you know, preach the word of God. You see, how, how should we preach the word of God? 2 Timothy 4 2. 2 Timothy 4 2. Munan sister, can you read 2 Timothy 4 2? Preach the word, be instant in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all the long suffering and doctrine. Okay. How should we preach? Preach the word of God, be instant, in season, out of season. Instant bit was instant coffee. Immediately you put coffee powder, immediately you put milk, immediately. Within seconds, what will happen? You can sip the coffee. That is how we should be ready. Instantly. Wait, wait, wait. I will come in the evening. I will prepare myself and come. No, 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 no. Whatever God has given, immediately speak on the spot. Even though you are not prepared, try to do it. God will help you. That is how we should preach the word of God. Always we should be ready, it seems. In and out of season, whether it is comfortable for us, whether it is uncomfortable, we need to take it. We need to preach. You see, therefore Apostle Paul said, Who unto me if I don't preach the gospel? 1 Corinthians 9.16 Sunita Esther, can you read 1 Corinthians 9.16 For though I preach the gospel, I have nothing to glory of, for necessity is laid upon me. Yea, woe is unto me, if I preach not the gospel. Hey, necessity is laid upon me. If I don't preach, who? Who means what? Oh, yo, a lot of... Huh? What do you say? Like, like for, uh, not blessings either way from God. Uh, he said, if I don't preach, then what type of uh, Christians we are able? Then we need to break our earth and vessels. Let the Holy Spirit shine out of us the Christian character, beautiful Christ like character, along with uh, preaching the word of God. Uh, therefore, dear brethren, these are the things that separate the great multitude from the little flock. Uh, now, our question is that. Whether we want to be of the great multitude, whether we want to be of the little flock. So how do we need to differentiate? So what things we need to fight? What things and trials that will come in our life? How we face it? It depends. So these are all things are going to come to us. But no need to worry. The Lord is there with us. He said, you see, the same question was asked by the apostles. They were all very stunned. Sir, they asked the Lord, Lord, these are all very tough conditions. Who can do it? We can't do it. You know, what did the Lord reply? Matthew 19 chapter. Matthew 19 chapter. Uh, Muna sister, please read. Matthew 19 chapter. Uh, 25, 26. Matthew 19, 25 and 26 sister. When his disciples heard it, they were exceedingly amazed, saying, Who then can be saved? But Jesus beheld them and said unto them, With men this is impossible, but with God all things are possible. Hmm. You see, immediately as soon as Jesus mentioned this one, the disciples are, Who then can be saved? Lord, what you are telling is not possible, God. No, no, no. What did Jesus say? Yes, you are correct. With men, this is impossible. But with God, if God's Holy Spirit is there within us, if God gives us strength to us, nothing is impossible. With our Lord, nothing is impossible. With our faith on the Lord, everything is possible. He will give us the strength. Only thing matters is that our faith. What did Apostle Paul say? I have fought a good fight of faith. He never said, I fought a good fight of love, hope, nothing. 
Why faith? Because faith is a structure that will be shaken terribly. But we should return at faith. Until the end, dear brethren, until our death, God is not unfaithful. He will definitely help us. So therefore, let us all pray and we may be part of that little flock and live a life which is pleasing to our master. Okay? Thank you. Lord bless.